you know, and it's a critique to some degree of psychoanalytic thought because the psycho, not that I, I admire the psychoanalysts tremendously, but they tended to think of sanity as something that was organized inside your psyche, or let's say inside your brain for that matter, or maybe even a reflection of healthy brain function. But sanity is to large part outsourced. And what I mean by that is that if you're fortunate and you're well socialized, um, other people find you acceptable enough to include you in their networks. And then all you have to do is pay attention to the functioning of that network and regulate your behavior as a consequence of the feedback you receive, and you more or less stay sane. And so like if you have a family and you have friends, then they'll help you make sure that your jokes are funny and not mean because they'll laugh when they're funny and they'll raise an eyebrow when they're mean. And then you can check in with that and they'll help you figure out if you're dominating the conversation too much and they'll, they'll push and prod you as you do the same to them and everyone stays relatively organized. And when all this hit to begin with, I had quite a large network of people, which expanded at some point to include people like you and the so-called intellectual dark web members. And they were helping me check in on my sanity all the time, you know, helping guiding me, guide me through the interview process, of analyzing my errors and commenting when I did something hypothetically right. And, and my family played an integral role in that. And so that was extremely helpful. I never thought about that as a precondition for, for uh, saying what I said, but I think there's something about that that's right. It's certainly the case that like I have tremendously supportive parents still. They're both still alive. They're still tremendously supportive at a very deep, deep level. And I think that that was a real gift that I had that many people don't have. You know, I've been struck. One of the things that torments me constantly is, and I think it's really hurt me to discover this, is I had no idea how deep the desperation was for people who lack encouragement. It's just because every time I talk about this, it makes me tear up because of what I've seen, I think. But all these people that I've met now, you know, I spoke when I went on my book tour, which was an unbelievable event. Uh, unbelievably positive event, but also I would even say to some degree traumat traumatically positive, like it was just too much. I really loved it, but to see the depth of hunger that people had for an encouraging word was unbelievably tragic. And for people to come up to me repeatedly over and over and over, hundreds, maybe thousands of times and say, you know, I was in such desperate straits looking for some encouragement, unable to find it. And then, you know, I came across your lectures. I thought, Jesus, it's pretty thin gruel to feed a starving population. I mean, I'm absolutely pleased beyond belief that people have found what I've done useful, but it, that doesn't uh, decrease the impact of the realization of just how hurt, how much hurt there is. And I, and, and it is hurt that's ground in a lack of encouragement. I have that. I've been encouraged my whole life. So, and that could easily be part of what... Now, you know, I also thought somewhat calculate in a calculated way about this, like... And I don't know how far this goes back, but I've, I also organized my life so that I was standing... I had legs out in many directions. I had a clinical practice. I had a business. I had my professorship. I had my writing. Um, you know, I had multiple sources of income in pretty independent areas. And so I, and I did that in part to maximize my capacity for freedom. I thought, well, I, and this wasn't something I think I thought explicitly, you know, it was part of what unfolded in my life across time. It wasn't easy to take me out. Although I've been taken out a lot, uh, like far more than I thought might be possible. Um, I can't separate that exactly from intrinsic health problems, you know, but 
I, I, despite my, you know, I don't have, I, it isn't obvious to me that I can go back to the university. I'm still employed there. I'm on leave. They would take me back. I don't know if I can do it. Um, I don't have my clinical practice anymore, which I really miss. I love doing that. And that was 20 hours a week, you know, I, I so that's a lot of time. Um, I finished writing this book, but I'm not writing right now. Uh, and so a lot of, I don't have any pressing financial concerns. And so that's, an, that. of course, that's a huge privilege, a huge benefit. And thank God for that. But despite me being distributed like that, I was still taken out pretty hard. So yes, uh, well, you, you know, I, I confess, I have wondered while you were um, incommunicado over the last year, whether that was just um, Goliath's good fortune, or if there might be something more to it, because you were such a singular voice at the point that Tammy got sick, and then you did, that um, obviously it was a tremendous blow to those of us in intellectual dark web space in our ability to uh, to fight and to hold the line. 